Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you two other simulations. One is about dynamic events and the other one is about uh, thermal analysis. So dynamics event is when objects have collision or something, for instance, right? You give them some initial velocity or something and they hit each other. Like in this case, we have this ball hitting this vertical plate and you give it some initial velocity and see what happens what kind of a stress is created due to uh, contact between these objects so if you look at the geometry the geometry is made from uh, basically a, a plate like this and a ball and i made the ball and the plate almost tangent almost perfectly tangent so the only simulation that is done is uh, right during the impact and it doesn't need to move this ball and bring it all the way until it hits the object reduces the computation time significantly and uh, i have applied material here i have applied aluminum high strength to this one and still high strength to this one and typically uh, fusion is recommending you to use material with nonlinear behaviors during impact especially uh, if the object is not modeled as a rigid body because they go through lots of stresses and they, uh, their stress strain behavior is not going to be linear anymore, not going to stay in the elastic region. So they typically uh, suffer requires you to apply nonlinear material. Now in this case you see that when I brought them in I turned down gravity and then I applied a linear velocity to this object and this linear velocity is 50 meters along x meters per second no y and no z so it's going to directly go into the plate and one other thing I did here here you can go and pick rigid bodies if you want so I modeled this object as rigid bodies to reduce the computation time because all I care about is this material here and I want to know about the stress in this material rather than the ball. And you see I picked the ball from a much stronger material. Although here, when I say rigid body, then it uh, doesn't need to calculate any deformation in this object. So a lot of computation is just uh, basically eliminated. So here, as you can see, I picked the uh, sphere as the rigid body. And for the constraint... I applied a fixed constraint to the uh, bottom of this plate. So I assume the bottom of the plate is attached to the ground. And then I also forced this ball to move uh, only in the X direction. You see, I killed all of the other degrees of freedom of the ball. No motion along Y or Z and no rotation. It can only move linearly along X for which I provided this initial velocity. And since they are in contact already, when the simulation starts, the deformation starts. And that makes the simulation quite a bit fast. You generate mesh, and then you can go ahead and uh, look at the results. And here you can see the results. And if you look at the results, you can see that the stress in maximum in the part is 364 megapascal right and then you can also look at for instance a, um, a displacement you can look at the maximum displacement in the part right you can look at the strain you can look at reaction forces at the bottom right and so on and so forth and of course you can always go ahead and you can look at velocities in different parts of the object right and you can always do uh, simulations as well And of course, this is again, um, uh, you can see this is actual in this case. So it's software picked actual deformation. So what you can see is actual deformation and it's not really uh, adjusted or exaggerated. Okay, so the part does really move due to this impact, although it's a thick part, but it is being hit by a very uh, massive ball with material steel. Okay, so. Clearly, you can see that there is um, displacement and there is um, uh, velocity. There is even acceleration in different meshes. And um, you can also overlay the mesh, right? So here, you can add the mesh and then 
you can look at the maximum stress which is right below i assume the impact point is here that is 353 uh, megapascal okay so this is a dynamic event which is basically an impact and the next one i want to show you is thermal analysis within an object and by thermal analysis we are just looking at temperature distribution along an object and uh, the object is free to move so there will be no mechanical stress in the physical part for the next one here i designed this puddle and i'm gonna apply different temperatures and different thermal conditions on it and we're gonna look at uh, the temperature distribution within the object but uh, if you want to know how to create a bottle uh, remember that uh, you can go here to utilities and go to add-ins and under add-ins and a script not only can make bolt and spur gear one of the commands is a bottle so you can run that and create a bottle here without doing all of the CAD modeling so here is a bottle that you can see Okay, you can make it like that. I rotated, made it upward. And then uh, the uh, material here, the, I guess the default material is glass. If you go here and look at the properties, you see that the default material is glass and I kept that. So this bottle is exactly made that way. And uh, then once you do that, you go to simulations and then you look at the... Um, thermal analysis here so uh let me show you let me get out of here so we can see what i'm talking about uh it's basically this one here thermal once you get into thermal you can just look at uh, temperature distribution within the parts okay and heat flux and everything and the important thing is this is about the steady state condition not transient one you cannot do transient temperature here so uh here you go and uh, uh you can simplify geometry if you have to you can apply material then you can apply thermal load okay so the only load you can do is thermal load and uh, you're not going to fix the part as i said so no uh, stress is created in the part if there is contact with one object with another one you can add it here but here the object is alone so you go to here thermal loads and the type of uh, loads that you have are applied temperature heat source radiation convection and internal heat okay and you're gonna apply that now in this case if we look at what i did if you go under load case and look down here i have applied uh let me show you I have applied a temperature of 80 degrees on this external surface here, right? And then uh, for the um, internal surfaces, I have applied 20 degrees. So let's say here you have some um, liquid inside of it at the temperature 20, right? And room temperature. And then all of a sudden you apply heat to the external surface, or you can do the opposite, right? So this is like, again, a, a glass bottle filled with water, a room temperature water, and then you put it under some uh, hot tap or something. And here I applied 20 on these faces. And then, as I said, you can do lots of other things, right? And here I just kept it simple and I um, looked at the result. I applied some mesh, looked at the result, and this is the temperature distribution. You see on the exterior is still 80 on the interior is still 20 and then the interesting part is this part here which is basically affected by the conduction the temperature is about 75 or something remember you can always create a point probe and you can move it so you see 75 76 and the most interesting part is this portion down below where you see a gradient right so as you gradually go from 80 to what to kind of 20 at the center of this so you have a gradient of what of temperature at the bottom of this because the bottom is basically um, not constrained by anything so here you have this beautiful uh, temperature gradient which is due to conduction and of course, you can do convection or anything else that 
you want. So let's say if you want to do another analysis, for instance, you can go ahead and uh, change the load. So this time I do the opposite. I go ahead and inside of this, I'm going to apply 80 degrees. So assume that there is a hot liquid inside. And then outside, instead of putting it at a fixed temperature of 80, I'm going to apply room temperature, but this time I'm going to do convection. So I go back here and I change that to convection. And I apply to these external surfaces all. But uh, here I use a H coefficient of 10 with a, an ambient temperature of 20. Okay. And uh, for this bottom surface also, uh, let's also apply to this one as well. Okay. And um, you can, of course, look at the mesh. And you see the pre-check is on. So you can go ahead and solve for that. And once it's solved, we can look at the temperature distribution in steady state. Okay, there we go. So here is the temperature distribution in steady state. So inside it's 80, and as you go outside, you have a little bit drop in the temperature. And you can again use a point, and you can see that it is about 78 or something. So it's actually relatively high, and that is because this is a steady state. So most of the material got the temperature, but in this top portion that you don't have uh, any fixed temperature. It is allowed to change based on something like a gradient here. And of course, you can go to the result tools and you can basically um, change uh, the min and max. You can look at the reports. You can come to inspect and create a slice plane here. So let's see if I can create a, a slice plane that might be interesting. Let me see if I can move it a little bit back and rotate it a little bit. So something like that would be nice. Okay, and okay that. And here we go. So this is also a temperature distribution within the part. And that's all you have, plus, of course, the heat flux and thermal gradient. So you can look at the heat flux, right? And, <clears throat> of course, you have green heat flux, which is somewhere around, uh, if we use a point probe, right? You can see the, this is a steady state. The heat flux should be very small. And then, of course, you have the uh, thermal gradient as well, which... Uh, in these areas that are homogeneous, it's very, very small. So this is a steady state temperature what uh, distribution and thermal analysis. Hopefully this video was useful to you. You learned two other uh, simulations in Fusion 360, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you.